Today I'm going to run through a case study of a problem that turned out to be uh, due to TCP checksum errors. Um, but there are lots of lessons learned along the way, so let's uh, get straight into this. The first thing to do is to look at the topology of the system. We have a vCenter server on the left hand side of this diagram. It's running in a Windows host under ESX and that's talking across the network to a number of ESX hosts all over the data center. So vCenter manages um, ESX hosts. There's a connection from the vCenter server acting as a client out to an agent on each ESX host and that agent runs on port 443. Now the problem on this occasion was that the vCenter server lost connection to its agents across the data center and we have a trace of one of those failures and we have actually two traces one has been captured on the vCenter server itself on the uh, that runs under Windows and the other has been captured um, using a riverbed, riverbed NetShark device running at a midpoint in the network. I'm going to use Workbench to do this and I'm just going to load up the um, workspace. Um, you don't have to use Workbench, this is just the way I choose to work. Um, these are just straightforward uh, Wireshark traces. Um, as you can see they've been anonymized using uh, good old Trace Wrangler up here. So let's start by looking at the vCenter trace. So let's bring that down here, drop Wireshark onto it. And you can already see there seems to be some problems down here. So this is just picking out one particular session from uh, the vCenter server, which is on this port number here, through to the uh, vCenter agent, which is listening on port 443. So you can see that we have some problems, retransmissions, dupax, etc. So I'm going to do two things here. The first thing is I'm going to switch into a profile that shows me um, just information about TCP and in particular sequence numbers, etc. Notice that I've just hidden away the IP addresses because I can, I can tell which direction things are going in from just the port number. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to filter out anything with a length of zero, just temporarily, to help uh, us stay focused. So, um, we have uh, a fast retransmission and then following retransmissions and you can see that uh, we're retransmitting 301 double five oh eight two uh, so if we go back and look to see so it's a number that ends triple five double oh eight two triple five double oh eight two well there it is so the next one retransmission of the one that ends one five four two and sure enough there it is bearing in mind that this is coming back from the agent over here and coming back towards us on the uh, in the vCenter server and we're tracing actually on the vCenter server. So that's rather suspicious. How is it that we've lost a packet at our trace point before it actually, uh, well, who knows, before it acknowledged it somewhere else in the TCP, uh, TCP IP stack? So this all looks a bit strange. Now the one thing we're not doing here is we're not by default displaying checksum errors. So if I look in here in protocol preferences you can see by default validate the TCP checksum if possible is not set. So let's enable that. Now we've got more problems up here. It seems that everything that we're sending from the vCenter host going to the um, agent has some sort of problem and it looks as though we have checksum errors all over the place. Checksum error there, another one there, all of these going in that direction from the vCenter server out to the agent appear to have checksum errors. Now the problem here is to do with the way that um, a modern network interface card works and in this case actually it's a virtual NIC 
um, talking to this vSwitch on this uh, ESX host. The NIC is now is sometimes responsible for generating the TCP checksum. It's, it's offloading that task from the TCP IP stack that's running in the operating system to the actual NIC itself, to the NIC hardware, and in this case a, a virtual NIC. That means that as the uh, outbound um, TCP segment passes our trace point going in this direction, the TCP checksum has not yet correctly been calculated. And so for that reason, we're seeing TCP checksum errors all over the place um, in this particular um, trace. And in fact, what I can do is just to prove the point is if we um, run up this thing, this matcher tool in uh, Workbench, I'll match up these two traces and we should be able to see quite clearly that uh, there in fact um, there aren't any outbound check checksum errors at that point, um, that this is uh, some sort of other issue. Okay, so we've matched up the packets here. I'm going to enable Synchro. Um, just wait for that to fire up. So that's going to fire us up a couple of copies of uh, Wireshark with the um, traces loaded. Okay, so there are our two copies. Um, so one has the trace taken on the vCenter server and the other one has the trace that's been taken on the shark. So, uh, okay, so um, if you're not familiar with Synchro, so what it does is, as you can see, as I'm moving through the vCenter trace, the, um, the trace down here is tracking to the correct point. So let's uh, go down to the point where we Oh, this is sorry. This is loaded up with the default profiles. We need to put the uh, TCP checksum, sorry, the TCP profile back in. Let's load this one up. Okay, and uh, so as you can clearly see up here, we have checksum errors. But if we look in the lower trace, which are the matching packets, we don't have any checksum errors. Um, so that uh, quite clearly proves the point that. Um, it's the checksum offload that's uh, causing the issue with the outbound packets. So let's focus on this trace, which is the one that was taken in the midpoint of the network. So if I uh, move down through this one down to the um, down to this point here where we start to see issues, and uh, you can see actually that. Um, even though we have a problem with outbound packets being incorrect, the inbound packets in the vCenter server are uh, the TCP checksum is correctly calculated, um, so they're not giving errors. Um, and that matches up here, and then we start to see other issues at this point. So the issues we're seeing here are checksum errors. Hmm, interesting. So we are seeing checksum errors. Um, but this one up here is confusing because we've got all these outbound checksum errors in the trace and that is not a cause for concern. So I think I'm going to get rid of that one. But the other trace is showing checksum errors. So let's come back down to the point where we saw some retransmissions. Let's put the same TCP length greater than zero in here. And we come down here, and here's our retransmissions again, and we're retransmitting uh, the packet that ends 0082. And if we notice up here, in fact, 0082, although it was received on the vCenter server, it actually has a checksum error. So this has all been slightly confusing and this uh, certainly gave us some challenges because the trace on the vCenter server showed checksum errors for outbound traffic, traffic going from the vCenter server out to the ESX hosts, but that was incorrectly flagging as TCP checksum errors because of TCP checksum offload. But these errors that we see here 
are genuine TCP checksum errors. And so to cut a very long story short, it turned out that this particular switch just here was actually corrupting the packets as they pass through it, um, but only uh, in one direction actually going from this way uh, back towards the vCenter server. So um, the question is, well, why didn't, how comes it couldn't have been a problem with the cabling or with the, uh, the SPFs on the switch, etc.? Well, the reason is because if it had have been, they would have been flagged as Ethernet frame check sequence errors. And that's not the case. So we are not seeing Ethernet frame check sequence errors in these frames. Uh, you can see that the frame check sequence is good but the TCP checksum is bad. And so for that reason, we knew that it wasn't an actual problem with the uh, hardware uh, or the cabling. It had to be a problem inside this switch. So the switch was swapped out and everything was restored back to normal operation. Here are the lessons we learned. Traces captured on a host may show TCP checksum errors, but we need to be careful that they are true errors and not due to some sort of TCP checksum offload. External traces are more reliable for checking this situation. And we knew that it wasn't corruption on the wire because if it had have been, we would have seen Ethernet frame check sequence errors. So I hope you found that useful and I'll catch you next time. If you found this video useful, head over to the Tribe Lab community website where you'll find cool tools and great information. community.tribelab.com